I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bigfoot, America's Creek Devil. Uh, Tom, would you like to introduce our guest today and kick this off? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Mickey, I want to thank you for joining us, and you had a an amazing encounter. And then I just found out this is a drone County. You've actually had a total of three sightings. So, Mickey, you drive truck, and I think you're driving it for some celebrities. I don't know if you can mention that or not. But uh, yeah. welcome <laughs> to the show. Okay, no, we won't. All right. Uh, welcome aboard. And uh, I'm going to hand the mic to you. And why don't we start off with the, the one that you and I talked about in the grass median in Montana. And tell us what you can and feel comfortable telling us about. We'll go from there. Yeah. That was, it'll be two weeks ago, Monday night. I was teaming with another, another driver who was sleeping, and I was very surprised he didn't wake up. Um, just coming across Montana, I was just east of Livingston, going east on I-90, and I was passing another truck that was slower, and there was just a figure, something in the edge of the headlights as I was coming up. So I slowed down a little bit, and I kept looking at it going, what is that? And he was about three feet into the center divide in between the eastbound and westbound lanes. All right, I got a call. And it's a grassy hey. area. And um, it, it didn't move. And I didn't see like a face or anything, but it was hairy. I mean, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, what is that? What is that? And then as I'm as I'm going by with the truck, it was as high as my bottom convex mirror. You know, the mirrors that hang out on the side, the lower one. Um, it was its head was that high, and I could see the shape of a man as, because he was standing sideways to me, coming up on him with his right shoulder to me. But yeah, when I saw it and I went, oh my God, that's Bigfoot. I hit the accelerator and got out of there. <laughs> so yeah, it was. Um, it, hey, it Mickey, was I got wild. a question for you. Um, sure. When you went by, sometimes these things, if they're tracking you, they'll, they'll, they'll their eyes or their head will follow you. I just wondered if you. Were your eyes in the road, or would you happen to notice if anything like that happened? On the road, it was dark. It was like one, two o'clock in the morning. Uh, there was another gotcha. truck coming westbound, and I could still see the shape back there, but it was very dark to me in the mirrors. You know, in the driver's side mirror of the truck, right. I, I didn't see any any face or skin I saw long like fur and it was dark with um, highlights now let me ask you I think you had mentioned that there was another truck that you think it indicated it gave some indication that it also saw the creature right I'm not sure if he did or not I mean, at that point, after I realized what it was, I was already past the other truck. So, I, I'm not sure. Okay, not sure. gotcha. You know, if it's like slowed down or anything like that, then. No, I didn't slow down. I went faster. <laughs> oh, no, I meant the other truck. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I okay. wasn't really paying attention to the vehicles at that time. I, I just looked in my mirrors and then right back to the road. Yeah. I've been driving well, a long time and that's what you do. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Well, we had a friend of ours who is a, um, 
is a frequent guest on this show, retired judge, and he lived in Montana. And I think I told you about this. There was a couple of gals that had, uh, this is when there was some comet out a couple of years ago. I don't remember what it was, but they drove north of his property, got out of their car, and, you know, on a one or two in the morning, they were looking at the comet. And then they realized yeah. they locked himself out of the car, the headlights are on, and one of these creatures walked right in front of the car through the headlight beams across the road, and they were in, like, serious freakout mode. Uh, they finally got a yeah, little tow truck if, company who came and rescued him. <laughs> yeah, if it would have moved, I, I probably would have wrecked my truck. Well, we don't want you to do that. <laughs> Nobody wants that. I, I mean, I can't guarantee that that would have happened, but I definitely would have been screaming at the top of my lungs. <laughs> right. And you're in a big, big truck. You know, you're in like a tank on 18 wheels, uh, yeah. right? Okay. Yes. So kind of freaky, though. Yes. I, I was talking out loud to no one. What is that? You know, and I was really surprised that my co-driver didn't wake up. And then when it was time to switch drivers in South Dakota, I said to him, I said, I saw something last night. And he said, what did you see? And I told him and, and he said, I don't know that I believe that, but I believe you saw something. So I have other friends that believe me and I have some who are just like, yeah, right. You know, you know that I is mean, so frustrating. It's like you weren't even awake. You have no idea what I saw. Right. And I saw it. Yeah. Right. But, you know, as a truck driver, a lot of times at night, it's a completely different world than it is during the day. Sure. Especially out there, out west, where there's a lot of open territory. Um, so? You see things out there, and you brush them off and say, oh, I'm just kind of tired. And you just kind of yeah. brush it off. This would not leave me. I was dreaming about it when I did go to sleep. And uh, the shape that I saw is the same shape that I saw in my dream. And I'm trying to get my husband to draw it for me. So, you know, I tried every possible way to, uh, to unexplain it. And, and it's, there is nothing else. I, I like that Bigfoot. term, unexplained. That's, Will, that was the first time I contacted you, gosh, almost six years ago, and I had my encounter. You know, and lots, I, lots I of people. I spent two weeks trying to unexplain it. I think everybody goes through that. Yeah. You sort of, you're trying to say, nah, it couldn't have been that. You're trying to figure out all the different things it could be, but what you're, what you're left with is right. what was in front of you. Exactly. Oh. And my oh. husband's an artist, so I'm trying to get him to draw it for me. We weren't having real good luck this morning. <laughs> and my drawing is just terrible. Well, that's Hopefully cool we that he's an artist, though. Get on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, well, have him contact it, us. We'd love to hear from him because we'd like to get some new artwork. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. That's no problem. Yeah, well, there's been okay. other things that I've seen. Yeah, well, I can't explain that. them. Um, just different things. Um, one night, just about dark, down in Arizona, I believe I saw the chupacabra going into the bushes. Okay. And I tried to explain that away as being a coyote with really bad mange, but it was bigger than what a coyote usually is. And okay. I think I also saw Bigfoot in the in the edge of the trees coming through Oregon one time. These are things that just stay with you. Tell us a little bit about the. Uh, let's hear about the. Bigfoot. Uh, what are? Can you do you, have, do you have any details or details? It was just a, a quick flash in the headlights of 
someone really, really big standing in between two trees at the edge of a two-lane highway. Dark colored, not as many highlights as this one that I saw recently. More dark colored. How many, so, what, do you remember what part of Oregon it was? Or? I believe it was along Highway 20 around uh, Mount Hood, going around Mount Hood to pick up a load. Okay, okay. And, and what time of day was this? Almost dark. Okay. That's been 10 years ago. But yeah, it was almost dark, you know, just getting just getting moving. And, and you're moving slower on a two-lane than you do on the interstates. And it, it was on a curve, so it was kind of a, whoa, what was that? You know, I mean, we see lots of deer and elk and and other things out there, other animals that are known. Right. So they don't when stand you on see two legs. something, right? But when you see a shadow or something like that, you're automatically slowing down to see if it's going to run out in front of you. And it, you know, it was just a glimpse on the curve of someone standing there, someone very large and hairy. And if you where had was the to what was the location with the one between the trees? Where did I hear you say that was? Uh, around Mount Hood on Highway U.S. Highway Twenty, I believe it is. Okay. If you had you to guess, up? it's height. What would you? What would be a rough guesstimate? Um, let me double check. Let me look here. It's just outside of Portland is where it's at. Okay. No, if, uh, but I was wondering about the height of the creatures, if you had to guess. Maybe 20, Highway 26. Okay. And yeah, how Highway high 26. do you think? Eight foot or what do you, what, if you had to guess oh, the it, height? If I had to guess, yeah, seven, eight feet. It was up a little higher than what I was. But yeah, it was big. Yeah. And wide. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's sure been 10 like. years ago. Well, now this one that you saw uh, a couple of weeks ago, you said it was uh, it was even with the bottom of your uh, uh, mirrors on. And now was the, the, the median was, I know a lot of those medians actually dip down to collect water. Yes. And uh, collect yes. the runoff of the, uh, of the the roads and stuff out there. And I'm pretty yes. familiar. I've, I've driven through Montana lots, lots of times because uh, one of my daughters actually used to live up there. Um, and um, so that thing had to have been, uh, what do you think, eight feet, nine feet? Better? Yeah, maybe eight, nine feet. Because he was like probably three to four feet away from me, away uh -huh. from the edge of the lane that I, you know, the, the fast lane. And he was probably three to four feet away from the edge of that. And yeah, he was he was probably probably eight to nine feet tall. You know, are I mean, you able to is see it, the facial features? I could not see any facial features. Well, that would be you know, at sixty-five, seventy miles an hour, it's yeah. boom, right by it. You know, you you don't see it. You yeah. don't see distinct. But I I did see like the arm was really big and the head was big, and then I saw like the shadow of where the breast would be in between. But the headlights made those shadows, so they were very distinct. And and what color was it? Now I know you you spoke of highlights in the in the hair. Uh, what color yes. again was it? Dark with like sun bleached highlights. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Uh huh. But, but it was like it was long hair. I was teasing my husband this morning. He. He has longer hair, shoulder uh, just below his shoulders, and he put it all over his face. And I'm like, oh my god, 
that's like what I saw. <laughs> so, well, but Mickey, yeah, I he doesn't have any highlights, just gray. Mickey, I got a question for you. Uh, I, sure. uh, I used to be a truck driver in the oil field, and uh, I, I live here in Oklahoma, and I know there's quite a few drivers uh, in the state that have actually seen these things. And I'm wondering, yeah. uh, I'm wondering, do you think it's possible that there's a lot more truck drivers out there that actually see these things that and are brush it off afraid? To being tired. Right. Or, yes, they're afraid to bring it up because people will think they're crazy. Right. Or you saw the black dog. The, the black dog is, is just a general term to seeing things when you're driving and you're tired. And, uh, you know, I, I've had that happen to me. Most truck drivers have, especially if you run on paper logs versus the newer electronic logs where, you know, you're just running and running. And um, I saw T-Rex run across the road. And I know it wasn't there, but I knew it was time to get off the road and go to bed. But you will see things like that. I can tell you my husband uh, was a trucker also, and he ran Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, in near Baraboo, Wisconsin. He came home and he said, I saw a little kid on a tricycle in the ditch next to the interstate with a little beanie cap on with one of those little propellers. And he was smiling and he was riding his tricycle. And I met another female driver, you know, a few years later. And we were talking about stories. And I said, told her that, well, she was from that area. And she said, before they made that a four lane, that happened. There was a little kid on a tricycle that had been killed. Oh, my. When it was still a, a two lane. He also saw a lady, a lady holding an old fashioned like oil lamp or candle lamp um, in long, like a long night shirt standing on the side of the road. And when he looked back in the mirror, there was nothing. It took me a long time to get him to think about because he doesn't didn't believe. And then we bought a house that was really old and we had ghosts and there were a few things that happened that made him a true believer. And I don't want to go into the details of all that, but <laughs> someone crawled in bed with him one night when I was out on the road. And he reached over. He thought maybe it was our daughter. And he felt someone. But when he opened his eyes, there was nobody there. So he's been, he's been a believer for quite some time now. He believes me. He Where I grew really up, cool we called that wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was he I'm was very story. freaked out yeah no he was very freaked out well have you ever very heard it, had out. any other have you ever had any other truck drivers tell you about incidences that they have uh uh had with bigfoot it's very hard to get drivers to open up and talk about that stuff They don't want to look I mean, at the DOT uh, card. Right. Well, and uh, I'm female, and I'm very open with the guys that I work with. And there are quite a few of them that want to hear, because we work together all the time. We have concerts around the country. And I, I can't say who. I, I am under um, NDAs with, with these artists. You know, we talk about stuff because we know each other and we've been together five, six, seven years. But other than that, just in general, getting a bunch of drivers like at a restaurant to talk about that 
it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. They just don't talk about that stuff. And like I said, a lot of times they're passing it off to, I'm tired. It's time to go home. It's time to get off the road. You know, that's what they pass it off as. uh, I didn't really see that. I think there's a lot more truck drivers out there that that actually have seen seen this kind of stuff, and uh, they just don't want to talk about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Chuck, that would make sense because it's not just truck drivers. It's people in general that see stuff and they try to uh, explain it away or they, they don't want to be – no, who wants to be ridiculed? And so they just tuck it inside and they stuff it inside. And that's one of the – I think one of the big benefits of this show is when people do tune into us, they realize that uh, – this is a safe format for a safe group yes. of people. And yes. uh, when I had my first, uh, I guess, episode or discussion with Will on this, um, I was very nervous. You know, I, I, all I wanted to know is what, what was it that I encountered? And he was like, well, why don't you come on the show? And I was thinking, well, why don't I not? Uh, <laughs> but I had to. I thought, well, that's a, that's a, that's a fair trade. And... Uh, but once I got to talking to him and the other two guys on the show, uh, I realized that I wasn't going to be ridiculed. I wasn't going to be questioned. And I was actually in a group that had all experienced these things as well. And uh, it, was, it was a very comfortable discussion after that. So that's a, that's a shout out to anybody that's listening that has had an encounter and wants to kind of get it off their chest, get a hold of us, questions at creekdevil.com. Well, and we as truck drivers have a tendency to just shove things down, forget about um, car accidents. We see some horrendous stuff out there, and we just don't talk about it. I have kind of trained myself not to even look because I – saw one accident that was really, really bad. And um, I'm paying attention to the traffic around me, not to the accident anymore. Even if I'm sitting at a standstill in traffic, uh, I just don't don't pay attention. Uh, yeah, I see emergency lights up there or whatever, but yeah, I'm not looking. And I'm not talking to people about it. I might talk to my husband about it, but other than that, no. Well, sometimes that's the best way to mentally cope with that kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and my husband is absolutely my safe place, you know. So (laughs) he gets an earful sometimes. (laughs) Well, you know who people, the, the people that you can talk to that, that aren't going to ridicule you for what you're telling them. So, Exactly. Exactly. So, well, that's fortunate. You're, you're lucky. You know, we've been married 26 of... years. We've been together almost 28. Yeah. So, that's very good. Yeah. Yeah, we bounce well, off of regular, each other all the time. Is this a regular route that you run all the time, or uh, was that just uh, you just happened to be in that area at that particular I just, uh, I just happened to be in that area coming from Vancouver, headed to Kansas City. Oh, huh. okay. Interesting. I'm sure I'm going to be through there again later this year, so... <laughs> I'll be looking. Well, Mickey, do you, <laughs> do you have any questions for any of us, Mickey? Not really. I mean, I'm just kind of, I'm really kind of in awe of the whole situation at this point. I have friends who have said, one friend in particular said, you're one of the chosen ones. And I said, what do you mean? Not everybody gets to see that, is what he told me. 
so I'm kind of going on that premise that I got lucky. Well, you but know, maybe Mickey, you I got... was supposed to meet. Oh, oh Mickey, you, you got the club. <laughs> you got yeah. you got lucky, but but you know, it, uh, truckers report it more often than you would think. There's several reports really if. if yeah, if any, anybody's willing to go out and just do the research and read, I don't have problems going to other research groups and read their their reports. Yes. Uh, and you got to wait for them to what is, you know, what sounds plausible, what reads as, as, as plausible, and what is, okay, you need to lay down the hookah pipe and quit smoking the Miramahoochee. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, you know, th- there's been several truckers, especially in, uh, the, the Vancouver, Washington area that have yes. made report where they've had, they've seen these creatures actually running alongside their, their log trucks. Oh, logger truck, logging trucks. Yeah. They go into the deep woods. So, you know, you they'll know, build these, a, these they'll cut trucks. a path and drive it. Well, but a lot of these logging trucks will be on the major highways going yes. to a sawmill off logs and and they'll look over and they'll see they'll see a face, you know, going to the same speed they are, about forty five miles an hour, and the damn thing's keeping up with them. There's oh, wow. several reports of that. See now I would be accelerating to get away. <laughs> hey TW, I got a I got a question for you, and I think this is an incident that you had reported or knew about. There was actually two police cruisers. One was a canine, and they're driving along, and the thing that's, that's, ran between the that's two. That's I interviewed those guys years ago, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was Pete, Pete Marquez. Um, it, was, it was two of his officers, uh, and they were coming back from, I want to say, Alpine area. Uh, of Texas, um, which is part of the Davis Mountain Range, Big Bend area, uh, and one ran right at the police cruiser that was doing sixty miles an hour. I mean, absolutely full tilt. You know, looked like it was going to run right broadside the, the the patrol unit, and the damn dog was going nuts in the car. Wow. And it just veered off just in time to miss the car. And it was, matter of fact, it was keeping a pretty good clip with it. You know, it's hard to imagine something that's bipedal that can run 60 miles an hour. So I always kind of question that. Well, he said it was running on all fours. Oh, was it? Yeah, I'd say uh, Now, that's a little bit more. I mean, cheetahs can run up to 70 miles an hour, so. Yes. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen chimpanzees on all fours, but they can they can move at they quite a move. clip. Yeah. Yeah, and they're humongous strides. They're not. Well, yeah, they're, they're on all fours. It's yeah, they're taking strides. leaps. And, yeah. Yeah, that and, that would that would be wild. And it goes back to the, you know, what I always have talked about is the fast twitch muscles and that uh, primates have that we don't have. And uh, that's why you can see these, these monkeys and chimpanzees and even gorillas take and just take these massive leaps. I mean, they'll be just walking along and all of a sudden they just go boing, just like they're on springs. And, uh, you know, they leap up into a tree or leap down from a tree or, or take a leap, a massive leap on the ground. So... Um, mm-hmm. they have that ability. We don't have that ability. So that's something that uh, Bigfoot may, may possess as well. Well, listen, I think we're, uh, this has been a great discussion. I think we're just about out of time. Um, anybody got any final thoughts or questions? I'll start off with, uh, Chuck, anything? Oh, Mickey, just keep your eyes open, and uh, if something else comes up, uh, be sure you give us a call. I sure will. 
All right, Dave. I'll play devil's advocate real quick because I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be saying, well, you imagined it, you were falling asleep at the wheel. What can you tell people to let them know that you were wide awake, you saw what you saw, and it was real? I was wide awake. I had slept for about eight hours prior to this. Um, I took over driving. Uh... Where did I take over driving? Butte, Montana. I took over driving. Uh, so I was not tired. I had my coffee. I was doing good. And um, I've been used to running nights for a few weeks. So I was on that schedule. So it wasn't like I was tired or it wasn't like I, I you know, hadn't been running nights. I had switched over to being a night driver for more than a week. Excellent. And I know Good what answer. I saw. Good answer. Yes, absolutely. DW. Yes, sir. Any thoughts uh, or you questions? Know, just, uh, you know, uh, just a, a friendly worded advice to your husband to keep his mouth shut. Maybe I'll have a happy ending to, you know, a semi-dream. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, we boy. talk about everything. We're best friends, and we literally yeah. talk about everything. Our kids hate well, us. Well, the other. Well, there's some things I just absolutely won't tell my wife. So you know, it's. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, we don't have that. Stuff. So the you know, last thing I'm going to do is honey, I felt somebody crawl into bed with me and there wasn't anybody there. Okay, what the hell's going on? Just tell him, you know, next time you keep his mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he had me to turn to that understood that that phenomena and, and ghosts and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, we turn to each other all the time, but he did, he does live by the uh, theory that it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. (laughs) (laughs) A word of advice to him, just a word of advice. (laughs) I will let him know. (laughs) TW, that was a good one. Uh, Forrest, any final thoughts or questions? No, I enjoyed it. Uh, just keep on trucking, girl, and be careful. Always got to come home to the family. Always got to be safe. Oh, yeah. All right, folks, we're out of time. Mickey, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And like everyone he's, everyone said, uh, you know, if you see anything else, get in touch with us. I will. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening in today. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. Until then, keep your eyes open.